How long have you been with that? Since 2007. Okay. And how long in motorsports? Good question. Um, I started doing it just on my weekends in 2004. Okay. And then I actually became full time from about the end of 2006, or basically when I came to Audi. That's when I was just doing motorsport at that stage. Had you always known motorsport was the way you wanted to go with yeah. your career? Yeah. I didn't start that way. I actually no. went into automotive first and then. Um, as I say, I worked on weekends with a team and then I moved into full time into motorsport after that. But you had that as a goal? That's what I wanted to do. No? Yeah. From, from how early? About 13. Really? Yeah. Did you have some sort of exposure back then that did it or you just were that? It was actually just watching Formula One on the TV. Really? Yeah. When uh, Senna was still racing against Mansell when he was in the Williams, watching him win in 92 and then basically it went from there. Yeah. That was it, just the TV. Probably the question you are mostly asked, mm -hmm. what is uh, the advantage to be a female in this uh, That's not job the most of... common question, but no? okay. No, uh, the advantage. Because you, I, I guess the, the thing is, you're, there's so few of us that do this, you're remembered automatically. And um, even if you haven't met somebody, they know of you through other people. Um, my sister is involved in, in motorsport as well. She's she's doing rallying with Mini. The most common question. What is the most common question you get? Is it hard being a girl oh. in, in motorsport? That's the that's the most common one. What's the most common answer? No, it isn't. No. No. If if it, anything, um, the only person I guess who has an issue with me being a girl is myself. That I think. Possibly people see me as a girl before they see anything else, but I, I don't think that's the case. I think everyone I work with is is fine with that fact. I'm treated like one of the guys. At first they tried to be very polite around me, no swearing, or they apologise for the swearing. Um, and uh, I wouldn't say they treated me delicately, but um, they were a bit more wary of what they were saying and stuff, and then I think I basically started swearing pretty much immediately that I entered the garage and it, it breaks down a lot more barriers. Is there anybody either on the team or even outside of the team that you've kind of taken inspiration from in the leadership style or or have you just kind of built it on your own? Um, my biggest influence or the person who's probably taught me the most is H. Uh, when I came into the team I was pretty green. Um, I had never been in an assistance role before, I'd just done data and you have a very different role from that perspective. Um, H has got a unique style like every engineer but he's got a very clear idea and command of how he wants to do things and I've learned an immense amount from him about how to handle people and how to handle the situations you've got. I can't say I do it perfectly like he does but I have learned a lot of that from there. I think the biggest thing is you have to lead your team and your crew and you have to be 100% certain of your decisions whether they're right or wrong so that you don't introduce um, sort of uncertainty with the guys because you've got a crew of mechanics who, have, who are led by what you choose to do on the car, obviously three drivers who again they need to trust you completely in order to basically get the performance on the track. Um, and then you've got the engineers around you as well who you're taking information from and you're having to process all of that. I think you, you, you sort of watch what other people do around you and, and the big engineers or the, the well-known names in engineering are Ross Bourne and Adrian Newey. You've got um, the likes of Ron Dennis and those kind of guys. I mean, that's those people are who I watched when I was growing up as a kid when I was watching motorsport. And they had had or the way they project themselves and the way they, they do their job is uh, perfect for what they need to achieve in Formula 1. So, okay, you can take some things from that. But in terms of the other leadership skills, a lot of that has to come a bit more instinctively. I guess I had a little bit of an advantage in leading people. I, I used to be part of a, a rowing club, and I was the women's captain there for the best part of three and a half years, and that helped, because I had to manage, I don't know, 30-odd women and... That was sort of like a, you know, a hobby type of thing. Some of the same things still count. Is there any driver, or was there maybe in the past, any driver where you say, wow, I absolutely wanted or want to work with him? I think um, in terms of the guys I've worked with in the team, of all the nine drivers we have now, ten actually including Marco, I've worked with all of them in some capacity, either as, at a race um, or when we're doing testing and all of them are 
really, really cool to work with. They give you the feedback you need, the criticisms when you need it, all of that kind of thing. There's no one I would say that I wouldn't want to work with from that point of view. In terms of working with anyone who has been racing, yeah. um, actually I would have to say it would have been Senna. He's my ultimate hero and my inspiration. If it hadn't been for watching him when he was racing, I don't think I would have first got interested as much as I was in, in motorsport. Um, obviously after he died, then a person who took over the leadership of the Williams team was Damon Hill. And I have to say that both um, my sister and I used to hold Damon Hill on a real pedestal and if he could beat Michael Schumacher, we loved it. <laughs> Um, so again, I think he would be one of those people. Does it raise any? Do you have to buy one of these cars to understand what, what goes into the of No, we don't get the chance. I would love to, um, but I think I'd give it one lap before I needed to come in and hand it back over. It's the, the racing side of things isn't something, or driving them isn't something I'm that interested in. However, what I would like to do, um, if we had a two-seater, is to sit in with a driver and see what it's like. If I ever went out, I'd, I think I'd want Alan McNish being my driver coach. Yeah. He's got a very um, good way of, I mean, he's obviously involved with young drivers and stuff like that. I'd love him to tell me what to do for a change. Which Audi driver would be your driver if he would co-drive you through Le Mans? Who has the, the biggest confidence? Um, from the inboard <coughs> camera, um, <laughs> all of them, uh, I think all of them have um, a very good understanding of what Le Mans requires. Um, I guess I'd, I'd love to go out with Tom and Le Mans. Um, is that an obvious answer? <laughs> but not at 10 uh, between midnight. I don't want to go out there. I don't know, I would. I would. <laughs> not last time. <laughs> yeah. No, not that time. That no. was my remark. Um, I've seen Andre on the inboard camera. In the, quite impressive. Okay. Something I could never do. How many uh, 24 hours of Le Mans have you done? Uh, with that? Audi this will be uh, the fourth one. It will be my fifth in total. And, and your first is lead engineer, correct? First is lead engineer. Does With a pole position are you trying to make it look easy? or? <laughs> That was an accident. Yeah. <laughs> uh, more, no, more, more pressure. Basically, um, the intention for us uh, was to treat the qualifying sessions as more practice options for us, mainly to get the drivers up to speed, uh, to work out the performance of the car, where we sit relative to Peugeot, relative to our, our own sister cars. Um, what happened with getting part? I can't say that was expected, put it that way. I thought Peugeot were going to go out and try and do a blistering lap. I think the number nine car attempted to. I don't know what happens when I'm in the third sector, um, but it wasn't the intention to go and do that at all. You're on pole. Mm -hmm. You're on the first step on the podium on Sunday afternoon. That's where I want to be. <laughs> I think um, Audi as a whole need to aim for the podium and for that first step. It's very important for us, especially with this new car, um, we have got to show our marker. There's a reason for doing this. It's um, we have to show off the things that Audi AG stand for, the efficiency of our engines, our um, ultra lightweight technology, all of those kind of things. And that aside, the, the credibility that Le Mans holds for winning it is way above anything else. So that's our priority. To say I don't mind which Audi wins goes without saying. If it's mine, that's even better. Mm.